And we're back with some more of the WWSY Hockey League celebrating 10 years on this channel. And the last one, the Seattle Emeralds won their third championship in a row, being the first team to do so in league history. And it looks like the Seattle Emeralds are losing a couple of coaches there in Derek Hudson and John Hillman. And so with that, let's get into the start of year number nine in the WWSY Hockey League. So here is what happened during the draft. The Tokyo Katana selected first, taking Carl Svacek, who is a two and a half star ability, five star potential. Looks pretty good right out of the gate. Then you have the Wolfsburg Wolves selecting Justin Fontaine, two star defenseman, five star potential. And then you have Dwayne Kane to the Nova Scotia Supernovas. You have Arthur Madison to the Checking Lions, a one star talent, four star potential. Then you have Ronnie Phillips, three star potential to the Salt Lake City Lakers. Then you have Reiner Akhmedsanov to the Christmas Elf Rings. Jeff Farmer to the Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies. Ryan Pezzer to the Seattle Emeralds. Scott Bachman, the three and a half star potential to the Halifax Tugboats. And then Halifax chooses again at number 10, taking Frank Bone. As for other notable players, you have Lawrence Goslin, the four and a half star potential going to the Wolfsburg Wolves at number 12. That looks to be about it. And now it is September 1st, so I would imagine that most of the teams have done their offseason moves by now. So let's take a look at the transfer summary, see who improved the most. The Halifax Tugboats gained 20 value, so they follow up last season's offseason with another solid offseason, but let's see if they can translate that into a championship here. They got Eric Brandstrom in a trade with the Fargus Holy Knights, and then going the other way was Remy Texier to the Fargus Holy Knights along with Roger Beers. So Remy Texier, one of the top point scorers in the league over the past few seasons, gets traded to Fargus. Nova Scotia Supernovas also had a pretty good offseason, adding Alexander Questel and Emil Backlin. And with that, we are on opening night. So let's take a look at the season preview for year number nine. The cup favorites are indeed Seattle. Of course, as they have won it three years in a row, it's hard to imagine they wouldn't be. And they can expect challenges from the Checking Lions and the Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies. Fargus stands out as a dark horse with Artem Portnenko leading the charge. And the scoring race will likely see Dan Gervais of the Checking Lions Bob Cunningham of the Christmas Offerings, and Seattle's Mark Johnson. As Mark Johnson appears to be a new player in the league, yeah, he was in the minors for the past three years, and all of a sudden, he comes up out of nowhere <laughs> with a five-star ability. So it seems like we're getting some more talent in the league this year. That's good to see. Just a bit odd that uh, a player of his caliber spent that long in the minors, and all of a sudden, just out of nowhere... <laughs> Comes up with a five-star ability. The top defenseman in the league is considered to be Dave Lively of the Christmas Offerings, Maxim Banchikov of the Checking Lions, and Valentin Ivanov of the Tokyo Katanas. For top goaltenders, you have Lucas Buess of Tokyo, Dark Poulon of the Wolfsburg Wolves, and Jeff Moorhead of the Salt Lake City Lakers, who are also very good in goal. So with that, let's get underway with the regular season simulation of year number nine. And to make things worse for the other teams, Mark Johnson joined the Seattle Emeralds, the reigning champions, three years in a row. So it's hard to imagine Seattle losing this year either. They're, they're currently 25-3-1. It would not surprise me if we see a four-peat here. Seattle is looking incredible right now. On paper, this might be the best team they've ever put forth, and that's saying a lot. I mean, yeah, it's really not even close with the amount of talent they have compared to... Most of the other teams in the league, really. I mean, take a look at Tokyo, Wolfsburg. Seems like the only team that's really on par with them in terms of overall talent is the Checking Lions. But even them, you know, they're currently 18, 13, and 1. So obviously they're not as cohesive as the Seattle Emeralds are. And no other team even comes close. I believe we are witnessing a dynasty here with the Seattle Emeralds. All right, so we're on January 1st. Here is the standings update about halfway through the season. The Seattle Emeralds, of course... No surprise here, are in first with 103 points already. And there's still 40 games to go. Could we see them at 200 points potentially? I mean, I, <laughs> it seems like it's a possibility. I mean, let's see, a regulation win is three points. They got 40 games to go, so a maximum of 120 more points. They could easily hit it. If, if they continue on this pace, they could hit it. <laughs> wow. Then you have the Halifax Tugboats in second with 73 points. The Fargus Holy Knights in third with 71. The Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies tied for third with 71. The Checking Lions in fifth with 70. The Nova Scotia Supernovas in sixth with 60. The Christmas Elfrings in seventh with 58. The Wolfsburg Wolves in eighth with 45. The Salt Lake City Lakers in ninth with 34. And the Tokyo Katanas in tenth with 21. And there was no notable trades during the trade deadline this year, so we're just here at the end of the regular season now. Finishing first was the Seattle Emeralds with 173 points. So didn't quite get to 200, but that is still a very impressive season 
from the Seattle Emeralds. Then you have the Halifax Tugboats with 160. The Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies with 138. The Fargus Holy Knights with 131 in fourth. The Checking Lions in the playoffs for a second year in a row. So that's good to see out of them. Finally getting some playoff appearances in. And they're in fifth with 128 points. The Christmas Elferings in sixth with 114. The Nova Scotia Supernovas in seventh with 109. And the Wolfsburg Wolves in eighth with 96 points. Meaning the Salt Lake City Lakers and the Tokyo Katanas finish outside the playoffs. And here's a look at the playoff brackets. So you have the Wolfsburg Wolves versus the reigning cup champions three times in a row so it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see if anyone can topple them then you have the nova scotia supernovas versus the halifax tugboats i'm surprised these guys aren't rivals yet since they're both in nova scotia and also with how many times they faced off in the past during the playoffs i mean it seems like they face each other basically every year then you have the christmas offerings versus the atlantic city Borough bullies and the checking lions versus the fargus holy knights and the first round has concluded the seattle emeralds have swept through the Wolfsburg Wolves in four. The Halifax Tugboats beat the Nova Scotia Supernovas in five. The Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies beat the Christmas Offerings in six. And the Fargus Holy Knights beat the Checking Lions in seven. So that means our second round matchups are the Fargus Holy Knights versus the Seattle Emeralds and the Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies versus the Halifax Tugboats. And the Seattle Emeralds, of course, as expected, beat the Fargus Holy Knights in five. And the Halifax Tugboats beat the Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies in five meaning it is seattle emeralds versus the halifax tugboats in the finals and then in the third place round you have the fargus holy knights versus the atlantic city boardwalk bullies and the seattle emeralds are the champions once again these guys have a dynasty here as they take out the volsburg wolves in four the fargus holy knights in five and the halifax tugboats in six that is incredible and then the atlantic city boardwalk bullies beat the fargus holy knights in the third place round i mean they they just cannot be stopped the seattle emeralds are a force to be reckoned with here it seems and i don't think they're slowing down like all their best players are relatively young too you got elfring who's 26 johnson's 26 scott is 23 tyler and montel are 26 25 respectively alange is 22 this is a young team and this is a very good team so it would not surprise me if they're in essentially the same position for year number 10 which is coming up here let's take a look at the player stats for the season so you have eric bradstrom leading the league with 86 points in 82 games played for halifax he is the leading scorer then you have 83 points for texier and cunningham so once again another year where no one hits 100 points and then Mark Johnson, Artem Portnenko, Dan Gervais, Frank McGuire, Gary Thorne, Julian Thierry, and Pierre Radke round out the top 10. As for goalies, you have a 926 save percentage in 29 games played for Mark Carroll, who is now 39 years of age. A 923 for Brian Grant and Kevin Turmel in 65 and 45 games played respectively. 923 as well for Evan Lawrence and then for Sean Graves a 922 in 40 games played rounds up the top five Seattle Emeralds led the way in goals for per game with a 3.35 to no one's surprise and of course the same can be said for goals against per game 2.32 they led the way there as well the Halifax Tugboats had the best power play with a 22.6 and the Atlantic City Boardwalk Bullies with the best penalty kill with an 88.3 oh we have a Hall of Fame vote here uh, Doronel Rosell is the only player on the ballot. When did he play? He played from 2023 until 2026-27. He was a goaltender who had 88 wins total, a 9-12 save percentage on average. I mean, I, I guess so. I, <laughs> I mean, we don't really, we don't have anyone co to compare him to. Sure, why not? Doronel Rosell, welcome to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and now it's time for the awards of year number nine. You have Eric Brandstrom winning the points award and goal scorer award. And Matt Reed of Seattle gets the goals against award. Best defensive defenseman goes to Dan Price of Halifax. The best captain goes to Artem Portnenko of Fargus. MVP between Dave Lively, Dan Gervais, and Bob Cunningham is Bob Cunningham of the Christmas Elfrings. The playoff MVP, Mark Johnson of the Seattle Emeralds. Yeah, I mean, it's a new acquisition. It <laughs> came up out of nowhere seemingly and uh, made an impact right away. Rookie of the year between Brian Grant. Carl Svacek and Richie Eccleston. It is Carl Svacek of the Tokyo Katanas. 52 points, 78 games played. And for the defenseman of the year between Buddy Elfring, Matthew Riker, and Denny Trunyov, it is Buddy Elfring of the Seattle Emeralds for 35 points in 77 games played. Best defensive forward of the year award between Ernest McGrushik, William Damour, 
and James Bowering is William Damore of the Checking Lions. 53 points in 82 games played. Goalie of the year between Brian Grant, Jay Kaziel, and Chris Tobias is Brian Grant of the Checking Lions. 923 save percentage and two shutouts in 65 games played. GM of the year between Willie Wells, Calvin Zapungis, and Mark Montgomery. It is Mark Montgomery of Seattle. The best coach between Carl Seifert, Emmett Lockhart, and Wilfred Nash. It is Emmett Lockhart of Seattle. With that, I think we'll end things off here. And in the next one, we'll see if anyone can take down Seattle because it's their league and they are running it right now.